Good morning and welcome to this virtual bridge session. And today it's a, a story from West Highland College about, uh, about particular learners that have uh, benefited from perhaps and uh, from, um, from a change in the way in which things have been delivered. So um, uh, uh, we're looking at supported learning students. Uh, rather than me telling you about it, I'll hand over to the person who can really tell you about it. And that's Katie McDonald. Katie. Hi. I am Katie McDonald. I'm the course leader and one of the lecturers at West Highland College on our supported learning programme. Um, our course is for students who have got significant learning support needs. Most of our students have got a learning disability. And um, we also have quite a large group of students who are on the autism spectrum. Um, and we've got some students who may have enduring mental health needs. Um, we're very fortunate, our learners tend to return year after year um, and we do a whole variety of courses with them some sort of more leisure focused like um, sort of art sessions but then we might look at local history um, and we have a strong focus every year on independent living skills um, some of our students join us when they're at school we have a quite a strong link in with the local high schools for our transition program um, with the aim being that when they leave high school that they might come on and do a sort of more substantial sort of course when they leave school with us. Um, the age range of our students is very wide. Um, we have students in just straight out of high school, um, but we also have had students in the past who are in their early 70s. Um, so it's a very broad range of students um, that we have. Um, and we're fortunate in that they return because we get to build up really strong, lovely relationships with them. Actually, we know most of our students very, very well. Um, so this is going to be mostly about how we've taken that group of learners from being in a practical face-to-face -face classroom to online, um, something which if you had said to us literally in February last year we were going to have to do, we'd have laughed at you, um, we would, yeah, we just wouldn't have, it never ever been on our agenda before any sort of online class with them. Um, but as um, news of Covid spread and we began to hear of it last year, sort of early March, um, it was something that was quite on our agenda as lecturers, um, given that our students tend to have um, more underlying health conditions. One of the things we were hearing when COVID was sort of hitting Europe last year was that people who had underlying health conditions were quite severely at risk. And I would probably say before the rest of our colleagues were asking the questions about what we were gonna do with students, um, we were asking those questions very early on. Um, we had sort of concerns um, around how well they would do. We knew then that students with learning disabilities already faced major health inequalities. Um, we knew that um, sort of lung disorders could, um, yeah, it, it could certainly hit our population of learners significantly more than we than it would have hit other student populations. Um, and actually, recently, it has just come out that people with learning disabilities are twice as likely to contract COVID than the general population. And if they were to contract COVID, they're actually three times more likely than the general population to die from COVID. Um, it's not a surprise to hear this. And it was certainly one of the things that had us thinking early on, we need to get this group of learners outside of the college building, we can't be meeting in the groups that we were um, so when lockdown was called last year, on one hand, it was a relief. We no longer had the students in the building and I didn't have to have that fear about their health with them being in groups if, if COVID was to come to Fort William or to our various centres. Um, but on the other hand, we were also very aware of the fact that the student group generally are vulnerable, um, generally are more isolated, and we knew they were all being sent home and they were being sent away from their friends and the community that meant and continues to mean so much to them. Um, for a lot of our students, college was one of the only things that they would do in their week. Um, if this was taken away from them, which it had been, how would they cope and what would they do? So it kind of coincided with the Easter holidays. So we let Easter holidays come and go, and then we got together quite early on when the students had been sent home to learn. I know a lot of the courses at West Highland College were very well equipped to go straight online. Um, we are delivered across a very large and remote area. A lot of our colleagues had those skills. So pretty much straight after the Easter holiday, they were good to go with online. We were not um, and had never considered this before. So one of the first things that we set about doing was just connecting with the students. We took turns to phone round parents and carers, tried to speak with students where we could, but um, I would say a significant group of our students have got communication 
um, needs um, that are fairly significant. So telephone calls, was it wasn't going to be enough. We could speak to mums and dads, but we actually wanted to speak to the students and connecting with them. And, and the telephone wasn't going to allow us that. Um, so we looked at what our colleagues was doing, um, the virtual learning environment that we had at West Highland College, which is Brightspace. Um, <laughs> and we took about trying to get our heads around Brightspace. Um, we thought we were there. We got a couple of students involved for some trials, the students that we had that were perhaps a bit more sort of academically capable um, and Brightspace did not work. We ended up with um, Katrina and myself in one virtual classroom, the support worker in another virtual classroom and three students lost somewhere in the, in the abyss. So um, it was clear that that, that wasn't going to work for us, but it was also clear that lockdown wasn't going to end for any time soon. Um, and people were by themselves and um, some students lived alone so we were really keen to make that connection um we kind of had a slither of hope we were looking at what was happening across the world everybody was going online um virtual birthday parties were happening um and we, we kind of there was just begun to be a little bit of hope in the back of our mind okay if, if you can have a birthday party online surely we can throw a class online um but it, it wasn't going to be on bright space um, at the same time, we were having conversations with um, Fiona Grant within the college about our concerns and, sh and she was very, very supportive and helped us look around. There was major, um, I don't know if it was security or privacy issues with Zoom at the time, but I had heard some horror stories about Zooms being crashed by people who hadn't been invited. And obviously with the vulnerable nature of our students, it just wouldn't be appropriate to have sessions that, that people could could get into so unfortunately because zoom felt it felt intuitive it felt user friendly everybody was doing it to us and immediately it felt like it was going to be the answer um but i can quite understandably the college had security concerns um so one of the things we did early on was we looked towards facebook uhi already had a strong facebook presence it had a page um, so we asked the college, could we look at this as a way of contacting our students? We already had about 50% of our students who were maybe using Facebook a little bit at that point. So we knew immediately that would give us sort of an in to those ones. And then we would try to pull the rest in. So the college behind the background, they did some um, marketing and they created a closed Facebook page for us or a private group that Katrina and I and a couple of the other lecturers have got um, admin rights over and we developed a West Highland College supported learning space on Facebook. Um, it was fantastic. Um, we immediately got students join in. We could immediately get information out to students and slowly and surely more parents, students, carers joined. So this was probably through end of April, beginning of May, June. Um, and it gave us hope. It gave us hope that our students could get online. It gave us hope that parents and carers could be involved in that, uh, you know, as was necessary, um, and that the students wanted to engage. So whilst we were frantically behind the scenes trying to figure out how we were going to perhaps look at delivering classes online, we had a space where we could provide them with information. And we used Facebook to give them things like accessible information on um, on COVID, we were looking at the Scottish Consortium for Learning Disability who were regularly putting out accessible, easy read information. So we would share that there. We would share what we were doing with our days to support our students if we were out and about to give them ideas. At that point, we were all locked down. The whole, the whole country was locked down. Um, and we were, the one thing we were all allowed was our one hour a day out. So what we did was we looked at things that they could focus that one hour a day around and come back and feed into us. So we ran like photo, photo, well, photography competitions, take a picture when you're out and about, show us where you've been, um, you know, have you met up with, um, who, who are you staying with, take a portrait, um, have you done any work at home, let us know what it is. So the students started to communicate via the platform, they would like each other's posts, they would comment on each other's photos, um, and it, it was it was promising because prior to that, we hadn't even um, considered online. So we were very pleased with that. It wasn't long after that, that we were given the option to try out Microsoft Teams as a, a platform. The college was already using it for staff. We were using it to communicate with one another in lockdown um, for the instant messages and for the, um, the video calling facility. Um, 
and we were managing it as SLP lecturers <laughs> we, we could do it so it felt like teams might be a, a positive sort of alternative to bright space it wasn't that dissimilar to zoom um and so when so when this opportunity came and it was just a pilot I still don't think everybody within you know for within West Island College has it um we absolutely jumped to be a part of that pilot we did some training we all got up to speed with it which actually was quite a, a feat for supported learning lecturers there's a few in the team who are very very um ICT literate um, and then there's those of us who have hid from it for years because we've never felt that we would need to. So for those of us, um, we, we we got ourselves up to scratch um, and we gained confidence. OK, we, we can get online. It can work. But what could we deliver online? So we began to look at a curriculum for delivery online. Um, by this point, we're sort of talking sort of over the summer. We were waiting between the summer holidays starting and, and I was coming back and um, so it was probably just before we were due to come back that we absolutely got the go-ahead for teams um, we put together a curriculum looking at what would be useful we focus a lot on life skills generally so actually it was really sensible life skills would continue but actually the life skills that you might need for living through a pandemic were quite different so it was a lot focused on resilience well-being health um, with the usual sort of art um, and things like that put into it um, the just sort of lost myself yeah so once we had learned how to get online we set up um inductions for students to come in at this point we were allowed you were allowed to socially distance meet within the college so whereas we would usually induce students students would be inducted in the first week in a sort of mass system it didn't happen we set up one-to-one -one interviews students would come in they would bring in a laptop or tablet if they had it and if they didn't we had arranged for them to borrow them and at a social distance Katrina and I we spoke them through getting into their emails, finding the link to join teams, joining teams, and we put teams on everybody's desktop. It, they weren't going to have to sort of faff around every time they went online. I think this was one of the keys. We invited parents and carers in where it was appropriate, and we spoke them through those steps. So everybody left the induction session, which was probably about half an hour, knowing how to check their emails, which we didn't do regularly before, um, able to log on to Teams and um, with a worksheet, a step-by-step -step sheet, should they by any problem lose Teams from their desktop. Um, we really sold it at that point to the parents and the students that this was the only option at this point. Coming back face-to-face -face was not going to happen, but this was an amazing opportunity to get to see your friends. I don't think at that point we realised the opportunity it was going to be. We, we just wanted them back online to see each other. Some of our students admitted at that meeting in September that other than their parents, they hadn't spoken to another person since we'd gone home in lockdown. Um, I think at that point it hit us how important it was to get this right. Um, which is why we we really tried to upsell it um alongside that we tried to upsell it to the support agencies and social work teams within the community we told them that you know that you know the gyms had shut down the day centers had shut down the bowling alley had shut down coffee shops weren't allowing people to meet up in groups this was really an opportunity for our students to make those links back together again so we got a lot of support from families support agencies and social work and i think that was also really crucial to getting this to work online um, we were amazed week one, they all had teams on their desktop and they pressed the button and they logged in. I think Katrina and I were constantly messaging each other day one going, oh my God, I've got 10 in my class. Oh my God, I've got 12 in my class. We were stunned. We were not expecting it at all. Um, and it's actually stayed like that ever since. We had to lay down ground rules. We sat and chatted with the students early on, right? It's very similar to a classroom what rules do we need to make this work well they'll be a bit different students agreed to mute themselves if there was background noise but generally we like to have mics on for everyone it, you can hear people a bit bother it doesn't make you feel like you're sort of talking into a black hole if there's a little bit of feedback from the students and so unless there's background noise they tend to keep their mics on they try to keep their cameras on as much as they possibly can because they want to see each other so that's one of the rules we have unless you unless you really don't want to um but new rules that we had never considered was like please don't come to class in pajamas um and occasionally we've had to remind them of that rule <laughs> but, but not as much as perhaps we'd thought um so it's been amazing students have got online we to begin with we were sending home work packs that we would work alongside the classes 
they would um, have workbooks that they could fill in. We would do some talking and then we would say, right, 10 minutes, fill in your workbook and get back to us. Um, and classes have been really varied. There have been classes focusing on getting outdoors. Um, what are you doing when you're out and about in the society, in the community? Journaling, how's the life going at the moment? You know, how are you feeling? What's going on? It gives them a chance to talk um, and to sort of feedback for us, but also to log how this whole experience is going for them. Like attendance and engagement has been amazing with we're talking students with profound and complex needs in some cases now I know they are not logging in themselves but their support staff are helping them with that but they are taking part they're calling out in class they're chatting to their friends um one of the feedback we had quite early on was that they were missing the canteen so we've now had to set up a, a time within the session where we kind of back off and I'll say I'm going to go and grab a coffee why don't you grab the coffee but chat amongst yourself and I'll give you 15 20 minutes they were missing that so that has had to come in um frequently I will sign in at the class start time when they've been there for 10 15 minutes before me and I interrupt them chatting about what they've been watching on tv or what they had for dinner last night um yeah it's it's been it's been significantly <laughs> we've been kind of blown over by how well it's gone down we didn't think it would but actually when we stop and I think we at the beginning we saw all the barriers as to why it wouldn't work but we actually never saw what it was going to give the students it's given them connection with each other they can see their friends they can chat for many of our students it's taken away quite long journeys one of my students used to have to get a bus and a ferry um, and he was really restricted as to when he could attend because he was stuck within those timetables. And he used to come in two days a week for, for a short part of the day. He's now in almost every single class. He's one of the first ones in there. So he obviously always wanted to engage, but was held back by that. Other students found the college environment quite noisy, distracting. The canteen was a painful experience and um, it created anxiety for them. The virtual classroom allows them to be in control of everything. They can switch their camera off, they can switch their mic off, and actually they can step back if they want to, and their breaks are quiet and allow them the chance that they need to sort of gather themselves back. Um, so I think we, we didn't consider all of those things that it would give our students, um, and, and we've, we've been really impressed by it. Um, the students have done absolutely amazing, as have their parents and support staff. Many students don't have support workers that they used to have. We know, you know, we, they had support workers in class that doesn't exist at home. So mums and dads have stepped up amazingly in some cases. Um, and it's I think it's really been a, a team effort to get it going. Um, I keep reminding my students because sometimes they'll beat themselves up a bit about, you know, maybe something not working or not having a piece of work done or they'll come to class guilty. Or I didn't do that task you set me. And I'll remind them that they are currently learning in college online during a global pandemic. And actually, they all need to cut themselves some slack. Um, we really try to focus on things that are nice and are joyful and they can enjoy. And I know we're academic, but we, we, we have to keep that balance between sort of health and well-being and, and building their resilience this year, because I, I don't think we can underestimate how much has changed for them this year. They have lost not just them we've all lost almost everything that brings us joy I think you know we you can focus on your family and you can focus on what you've got immediately and if you're fortunate enough to have that that's great but many of my students are living maybe by themselves or you know they're living with their family but there's quite an age difference between them and mum and dad they might be of an age where they may have moved out did they not have this, the learning support needs um and I keep saying to them, like, you know, they're not they're not getting out to the gym. They're not seeing their friends. They're not going swimming. They're not going bowling. They've not got youth clubs on. They need to cut themselves some slack and, and make sure that they focus on what they are enjoying. So we are trying to make classes a really enjoyable place to be because we know that the rest of them sort of aren't out there at the moment. Um, yeah, it's been amazing. I don't know if you want me to shut up. <laughs> I could waffle on for ages about them. They like I just can't tell you how well they've done. And we have been totally blown away by the fact that this has worked so well in fact so much so and this is the thing that, that stuns us all is that we're seriously considering keeping an online element when covid finishes hopefully fingers crossed when covid finishes but there i think there will definitely be a demand within supported learning to keep this up um and you know we, we were connecting centers across the country in fact maybe i'll just one more thing and then i'll stop on wednesday this week we had um Early on in, in lockdown, we, I'd contacted colleagues in different centres and one of them was a woman in Inverness um, College. And we built up a bit of a relationship. We've been chatting. Um, and last week, this week, we managed to get her students and my students joining. So we had to talk our students through 
teams onto Zoom where her class was. And um, so one at a time, we sort of held their hand and virtually to get into a Zoom class, which for, for, for many was an absolute first for them. But it was amazing. We managed to get between her students and our students, 19 students, some in Fort William and some in Inverness joining. Um, it, you know, it would never have been possible. We wouldn't even have considered it before. And we're now looking to make this a regular thing. Um, so, yeah, so many good things have come out of this that surprised us. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I'm sure you've spurred about a uh, hundred questions there. Um, uh, uh, there's one quick one there, I think, uh, which I'll really, how long do, do you keep them in an online session? What, uh, what's the, 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 the span? So it will depend on the student group. We've got some students with really quite complex and profound needs. With that group, um, I tend to look at sort of like a 25 minute kind of taught part allow them some time to chat 25 minutes absolute maximum input from me but what I tend to do with that group is I'll set them tasks to do within the week you know I'll have an and then I'll link to videos and instructions and there'll be worksheets and things that they can do and then I'll say it'd be great if by next Monday you will come back and you have done it it'd be lovely if you would show us it some students students are still using the Facebook page they'll maybe do the work in the week and they'll post it to Facebook I've done that task from Monday and they'll upload it there and um, other students perhaps the students who are more likely to sort of live more independently in the community and managing sessions that are two hours with a break in the middle um that seems to be about right i don't but i would never do the two hours straight it's you know maybe an hour 45 minutes and then a break and then another one and on either end of that they're having a catch-up they're chatting with each other so that needs need time for that <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, before I've come to one of the questions there, um, were the, did the students have familiarity with Facebook before you introduced that as a platform? And all? Some of them. Yeah. A, a couple of, yeah, some of them definitely did um, and were using it. For others, it was quite new and a, a few were a bit nervous about using it because they'd heard horror stories about social media and bullying. And so it was a bit of reassuring them that actually you can keep it closed. And we talked them through setting up their privacy status so that other people couldn't contact them. Um, and, and also the you know, online safety, don't accept friends requests from people that you don't know. So yeah, some of them did and then some of them didn't. And for others, parents have joined for them on their behalf um, and will update pictures for us for them. Excellent. And keeping on the Facebook one, Douglas, if you're able to unmute and ask your own question, please do go ahead. Hi there. Um, um, at Cowinan, we're just start. We've, we've got what we call community groups, um, and that, that's maybe the older students who have been with, with us for, for a wee while, and we've primarily been using telephone to, to, to get in touch with them. Um, we've just started really using um, Zoom to, to have wee, wee video sessions, and we're looking at, at getting them onto Facebook. So I was interested in, in how um, you, you'd use Facebook in West Highland. The Facebook has been great for keeping in contact between classes and um, I find that we'll use it sort of out with sort of your sort of regular teaching hours like over the weekend like I know we, we don't need to but if I'm out and about and there's a beautiful scene or it's been snowing I'll take a picture and I'll say is anyone else out in the snow today and then it's nice students will drip feed in photos maybe where they're in the snow or something that they've been doing so it kind of supplements the class it's also acting a little bit at the moment as a gallery for the work that they're doing in the like mm -hmm. art classes um, they'll post up things that they've done in the week um, and it's a place where we I can not only can I give them some positive feedback on it oh that's great but actually they're getting it from their peers too and it's you know it's written down so they can pick it up and they can look at it and and it's nice because all the lecturers across the team um, we're spread out will comment on other students artwork so it might not be their student but they'll make a point of coming in and going oh you know that's a beautiful job you've done that yeah. lovely there or so I'm it works huge. alongside the class I, I'm not hugely Facebook. I don't, I don't know an awful lot about Facebook myself. Um, they're thinking of using a video. Apparently there's some sort of video conferencing function in there. Is, is that something you've tried to use? Or? It, it is. Um, we, we used it the final week of term. Um, this was all failing having any other way of contacting them. We wanted yeah. to mark the end of the year and we already had the Facebook closed group. So we set up a Facebook room and we did our celebration of achievement at the end of the year, um, which was lovely because we actually got the local radio station involved and they played all the students requests for the hour. So we all had the radio on whilst um, we were in the virtual room. But since we've got Teams, um, we haven't had to go back and use it again. Um, Teams is working perfectly well. OK, OK, thank you. Thank you for that question, Douglas. And we've got a question from Megan from Sparks about student engagement. Megan, if you can unmute. Hi, Katie. Thank you so much for that. It was really, really interesting. And congratulations on what's clearly a huge amount of hard work as well. Um, 
so I'm from Sparks, so Scotland's National Agency for Student Engagement, and we have done some work previously with with engaging with with sports education cohorts. But I suppose I'm really interested, sort of, in the COVID context. Have you been able to kind of gather feedback from the student on how the students and how things are going? Would you have any tips for we're thinking about maybe at a national level trying to gather this sort of information? Would you have any tips on the best way to engage with these student cohorts, perhaps involving parents and carers? I really would welcome any thoughts you have. Well, the um, the feedback from the students that we've had, so we've had verbal feedback from them. We've actually had some saying, I don't ever want to come back to college. I love being online. So that's been really positive to show us that it's worked for some. We do have some that are desperate to see each other in person and they're not getting that same experience from it. So it is very mixed. But I think one of the things that speaks loudest for us and, and still surprises us is we have had, in, in Fort William at least, students have doubled the hours they're, they're booking to attend you know, then they're not restricted by things like getting to college buses and trains. And um, so they've signed up to more classes than they've ever done before. I think part of that, maybe this is selling ourselves a bit short, might be there is nothing else in our local community currently. So college is absolutely providing them with something and, it, and it's reliable, it's gonna continue. So it, it could be partly that. Um, it could be just that opportunity to see their friends whilst, you know, they're not allowed to go out and see them in, in other ways. But um punctuality has been amazing as well you know before when we were in a college building they would drag their feet at coming in from the canteen um and there was always a delayed start but now they're in the classroom on time in the mornings um and attendance has been great people are not you know the usual things that would keep people off bugs and flus and colds they're not coming down with them and even if they have got them they're still switching their computer on and joining in a classroom I, i'm i've been really surprised but i think it's probably the best attendance we've ever had <laughs> um and quite possibly with us, you know, too, because, you know, there might have been a point in the year where a lecture would come down with something and maybe couldn't attend. But actually, if you've got a cold and you're in front of a screen, you're not, you know, you feel a bit safer that you're not going to pass it around or make anybody ill. I think for engaging with the parents and the students out with, I think the lecturers in different centres probably know them the best. So if you can link in with the lecturers and the colleges, they can probably get that information out. Um, and if you're looking at engaging people that are not just current students but are maybe potential students then I think social social work teams are great if you can get them on board and you can get dialogues with them they can also help get the importance of it out there you know that it's important to feed back into it thank you so very much for that really helpful thank you I'm afraid I have to dash off now but it's been really helpful thank you and we've got one time for one more question in the recorded session and D West if you are able to unmute um, yeah, I was just asking um, really about your sessions, um, how many times a week you had the, the students attending online, were you still emulating like a, a, a normal timetable? We've, yeah, we've tried to keep the timetable as, as similar as it was to possible without the exception of just we just don't have too much screen time, but we are trying to create work that engages them for the same length of time. Um, so like my complex and more profound needs group on a Monday that I teach, we do art. Um, we have a tutorial session where we will go through the instructions for what needs to be done that week. But then that session is set to happen off screen. I don't want paint palettes and water and glue next to people's laptops and tablets. Yeah, yeah. So they're given the tools to do it. They're given the instructions and then they'll they'll have the work to do elsewhere in the week. But that seems to work well for them and support staff, too, because then it gives them something that they can then focus on another day in the week. You know, we've got that task from Monday. Let's get that done today. Um, which seems to have been good. We've delayed our start times. We don't start at the same time we usually would. We're allowing students to get up, get dressed, mm -hmm. have their breakfast, um, mm -hmm. because we don't want to have the session having started and been over like before the days started, because yeah. a lot of the days are focused around the sessions. So the day, the sessions seem to be more condensed into the middle of the day rather than dragging out either yeah, end of the day. Um, yeah. and, and I so think it, it's given them something sort of um, regular to attend and to join into. Yeah, no, that's really good. I'm sorry, I, I don't want to take over here. I hope you don't mind me asking. Um, are you still following your, sort of like your unitized program as well as doing these almost like additional sort of social activities that would feed into that, you know, they're learning, absolutely it's part of learning. Are you still continuing to do unitized? We are, but the course that we deliver is generally a part-time course. The students are not attending right. more than 16 hours a week with us. Mm. So actually our requirements for achieving units is slightly different, but we have managed to work them into sort of more health and wellbeing units. Um, we've created an internal unit on um, communicating using an online platform this mm -hmm. year. And um, it's it's and we've been able to do things around relationships too, on because yeah. you can work around sort of appropriate behaviour within the classroom. So we were kind of creative as to what units we did this year. 
um, pulling them in to fit with what was going to work best. Yeah. I think when we'd started, we'd kind of hoped we would get them face to face at some point to get those yeah. absolutely finished up. But we're just about to meet next week as a team and discuss. We're not going to see our students this year. I really don't think we are. I would say very, very unlikely to. Um, how are we going to assess them at a distance? Um, so that's that's on our plan to to look at. Thank you. Well, that brings us to the end of the recorded session. A huge thank you to Katie for uh, giving us an insight into what has been quite a challenge, but one that's met, uh, been met by a really creative response. And, uh, and thank you very much for giving us an insight into um, uh, how that's worked. Uh, with that, I'll bring this session to a close.